we have here from the tax committee, which is myself, Patrick from the Board of Assessors, he's here. Mark Howard, economist, he's here. Diana, we have you on Zoom. And the other three people, the three citizens are not here. Freddie Lopez, Ben Swan Jr. and Ruth Ann Stotts, I believe is her last name. Um, so we'll give them a couple more minutes. And um, we have other people on online here. Uh, Sharon C., could you identify who, what your last name is, Sharon? It's Chevins, and it's just a concern, just a citizen, concerned citizen of Springfield. Concerned citizen, okay. Glad to have you with us. We have um, the people I just went over, and we have the members of the three members of the Board of Assessors here are here as well. I see Lindsay and Cherry. Is there a Cherry out there in TV land? She's connecting to. Okay. Uh, Verona. We'd love to get your names and addresses so we could follow up with you if necessary. Verona. People I see out there, Verona, Mo, uh, Jay Latori. We've got you. Seen a lot of you lately. Um, not, not surprised to see you here. Anybody want to identify themselves? Um, Councilor Perez. Hi, okay. everyone. Hi, Maria. How are you? Thanks for Hi, joining. Thank you. I think it's just you and me from the council, as far as I can tell so far. I'm here. Um, Zeta Govan. Oh, Zeta. Okay, great. Good evening, Councillor Allen. It's good to be seen and good to be heard. We're happy good to have, to have you, you here. Happy to have you. All right, so we are expecting three more people. Um, so we're four for seven in terms of the members of the committee. Other people are we're thrilled to have you with us. Uh, the committee has the has the job of eventually the week after next probably um, identifying a tax factor uh, which we will adopt, uh, which will go to the city council for a vote. Uh, and that factor is based on your assessment of what the information you've been given, you, you know, and anything else you bring to the table on it. Um, in terms of the status of the the information, Patrick, you're not back at your desk yet, are you? No. Um, so, or Matt or Jessica, you can help us with this. So we wait for, in order to go forward, we wait for DOR to approve our values. Correct. That's correct. Yeah, that's, right. that's correct. And Patrick is, they haven't approved their values yet as of this moment. But when I asked him that 15 minutes ago, he said it could happen today. Yeah. Patrick, um, you want to give us an update on the, the status of the values and your discussions with DOR? Uh, sure. For a second? Yeah. Yeah. So let's just kind of back up a little bit and sort of talk about, um, the role of this committee. So this committee is designed to uh, help uh, suggest a residential factor, which would determine the tax rate. So the, the uh, residential tax rate and the commercial tax rate. So we meet twice. Uh, this first meeting, I was hoping to have uh, final valuations because you probably all have seen those penny tax rate sheets. Uh, I unfortunately cannot distribute that today because our values have not been finalized. So if there's any changes, then those pennies change uh, as well. So I just would rather not give out uh, information that could possibly change uh, before our next meeting. Um, so we have submitted anything, everything to the Department of Revenue. We are just waiting for verification and approval to, to proceed to uh, give out all of that uh, information. So that's kind of where we are, uh, where we stand tonight. Um, okay, so can you, what's your best guess or tell us how, how we might predict when we, when we'll get that? Yeah, so I was working with Department of Revenue today, or actually the, the, the board members were Jessica, Matt, and myself, we were working with Department of Revenue today. Uh, so we were thinking um, Monday or as late as Tuesday uh, for the tax rates. I would say I, I did call all of the city councilors today. 
just to sort of let them know where we are in the process. Um, and that I would email out those option tables, the option table as quickly as I can. And I would also do the same for this subcommittee. Uh, I know we have a couple of new subcommittee members for this year, and I'm happy to not only provide the information, but to invite them in. Let's just hypothetically say we're, we have approval on Tuesday. I'm happy to invite any of them in individually uh, to sort of go over the process because it is very complicated uh, and it's extremely um, intimidating to sort of look at that form. So I just kind of want to demystify that a little bit. Um, so once I get them out, I'll send them to everyone in this committee and city council and uh, we can um, go from there regarding tax rates. And what I was thinking, go, go ahead, ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, so I what I was thinking, you're, av you're available, you're available to meet with anyone. Correct. Okay, great. Those are the, none of the three citizens that we invited are here. Yeah, I, just, I see that. Um, yeah, I was just about to ask um, <laughs> who was on that new committee. Yeah, well, it's um, there are some citizens here. Yeah, I'm just, I know when we, I've asked them to identify themselves and a couple did, um, but the three citizens that were in, you know, uh, invited to be on the committee are Freddie Lopez, Ben Swan Jr. and Ruth Ann Stotts. And I don't think any of them are here or online. I did speak to um, Freddie, spoke to Ruth Ann and Jesse spoke to Ben Swan Jr. So. Um, so hopefully, we'll, if we don't get them in this meeting, we'll reach out to them again and get them for the second meeting. Um, but yeah, if there's any other citizens here that want to identify themselves, that would be great. We got Jay LaTorre and uh, Sharon C. and uh, I think Sherry. Anybody else wants to identify themselves? Yes, this is Jennifer Sanchez. Great. Thank you, Jennifer. Um Kim, can I just introduce myself? Because a lot of people probably don't know who yeah, I am. Of course. Yep, go ahead, Diana. So I'm Diana Zinal, and I'm president of the Springfield Regional Chamber. Um, and I'm happy to be here and part of this. And just so people know, I also do this in my own community. I'm chair of my select board. We actually set our did our tax classifications on Tuesday. So familiar with the process. Good, that's great. Yeah, so she lives up... Um, in a town north of here and uh, she does the same thing for her town so but in her role here is the representative chamber and she's been there a little over a year she came on board to chamber last year just as we were starting to do this um okay anybody else uh so the the other members of the committee that are here are myself patrick greenhall from the board of assessors mark howard uh economics professor from Springfield College, Diana, who just introduced herself. Those four people are here and we're uh, anxious to have the others be join us when they can. Um, Patrick, our agenda today was you given a, because we can't share numbers or any of that, you were gonna give us a PowerPoint on the process, et cetera. That's right. So let me try to uh, pull that up on the screen here. We determined it would be easier for him to do it there in his office than to do it here. Okay, you should be seeing something uh, right now that just has the header board of assessors. Is that correct? Yes. yes. Okay, perfect. So uh, let's see. Okay, here we go. So board of assessors. So our role is the board of assessors. We are required to determine the full and fair cash value of all real property and personal property in the city of Springfield. Uh, full and fair cash value is defined as the price a willing buyer and a willing seller would settle upon in an open market transaction. So this is typically something that's listed with a realtor. Um, the real estate and personal property valuations are updated every single year to ensure that they are assessed at full and fair cash value. The Board of Assessors, it is critical that our data is up to date and accurate, and we must maintain this information for each parcel, including but not limited to the type of house, the year the, the house was built, 
the square feet, the number of bedrooms, bathrooms, and conditions. And when I kind of give this presentation out in neighborhoods, I, I encourage people to go to the city's website and take a look at their property record card um, and verify that the information is correct. Uh, if you do happen to notice anything that is inaccurate, you certainly may call us and we could schedule uh, an inspection. Um, just something that could jump out as, as being off would be, let's say you had a garage that was later torn down and we still have the garage listed. This would be certainly necessitate a need for an inspection and possibly an updating of the property record card. We have some key assessment dates. We are in fiscal 2024, which goes from July 1st of 2023 to June 30th of 2024. We're looking at the legal description of the parcels and ownership as of January 1st of 2023. And in Springfield, we look at the physical status as of June 30th. So what that means is we look at all of the, what is actually there on that parcel as of June 30th. And we basically move that physical status to, to a, a January 1st date to determine the actual value of the property for fiscal 24. We are regulated by the Department of Revenue, as we all just talked about that we are waiting for final verification from them to move forward with our tax rate process. They are verifying that we are meeting the full and fair cash value standard, and we are in compliance with Proposition 2.5, which we'll talk about shortly. Um, the Department of Revenue goes through a very formal certification process once every five years. Springfield's last certification was in fiscal 2023, so last year. Uh, they also require that all municipalities update their values every year to reflect full and fair cash value. This is called an interim year adjustment. That's what we are in now. Uh, and we still must submit a lot of the same documentation that we do in a certification year, uh, including sales uh, and our new growth information. Also, I do want to point out, if anyone has any questions, uh, please feel free to jump in at any time. The fiscal 24 values, uh, we are looking at the calendar date of January 1st of 2023. Thus, we are looking at predominantly calendar 22 and calendar 21 sales. So we're always a little behind the market because of the timing of the assessment date. I would you know, provide tonight that we do have some general indicators about the residential market uh, for our values for fiscal 24. Single family homes did increase by about 10.8%. Condominiums increased by about 16%. Two families, 14.7 and three family properties increased by 22.8% in value. In one year. In one year, correct. Proposition two and a half. Go back real quick, because I, I, I'm i sorry, I got a little bit distracted. I just want to see those value increases. That's okay, certainly. Sorry about that. Okay, thank you. Sure. And, and if I have one question. If you, um, if you know what's been the increase over the last, uh, say, two or three years, is it is it a similar rate that we've been saying? It it is a similar rate, right? So the calendar uh, twenty two sales are still stronger than the calendar twenty one sales. So we've seen this level of increase. Uh, I would note that the condominiums during you know kind of fiscal twenty one twenty two they did not see the same level of appreciation, but I think part of that is the housing stock, what is for sale, is significantly less than before. So the condominiums this year saw, uh, as you can see, a pretty substantial increase. Proposition two and a half, or as we all uh, call it, Prop two and a half. So this is a law that went to effect for 1982, and it is a limit on the property tax levy and is based on three separate concepts. The first one is the tax levy. The levy is the amount of revenue raised through the assessment of real and personal property, and it partially pays the city's overall budget. And I say partially because Springfield, most of our budget uh, is actually funded from the state. We are uh, one of the... Um, uh, communities that pays less into our, our total budget than, than most other communities. The levy limit, this is often the maximum amount a mun municipality can levy, and this is a historic figure based on the prior year's levy limits. It is annually increased by adding an automatic 2.5% increase from the prior year levy limit and adding new growth. 
I would point out uh, that the prior year's actual levy is not used in this calculation. The levy ceiling, this is the maximum amount that a levy uh, limit can be in any given year. A calculation and constraint that is based on two and a half percent of the total taxable real and personal property. The levy ceiling does change every year based on our values. Uh, I, I should have put a slide in here to note uh, that there were a few years where the city of Springfield, we were at our levy ceiling. Uh, so we actually could not raise more uh, from the levy from one year to the next. Uh, it, it, it was a, a significant issue financially for the city of Springfield. Do we do we know what our um, levy ceiling is now and how close we are to it, were to it last year? Last year, we were pretty, uh, hang on one second, we were pretty far, but I would say we've just done some kind of uh, calculations where if the, you know, depending if the residential market and the commercial market, uh, if they're stagnant or there's a decline in a residential market, we are not that many years away from the levy ceiling again. Last year, we were about $30 million between our levy and our levy ceiling. And that's because the values have gone up uh, substantially. So we were $30 million away from our levy ceiling. Can you just explain that a little bit? Certainly. So the amount that we actually raised uh, versus the levy ceiling. Okay. Uh, so the levy ceiling, let's see. Um, So last year, we levied two hundred and forty-two million, and the levy ceiling was two hundred and eighty-one million. So, the levy ceiling was two hundred and eighty-one million, and we levied what again? Two hundred and forty-two million. Two hundred and forty-two. Okay, Perfect. so the difference is, okay, got it. Thank you. You're welcome. This is just a chart showing uh, the revenue sources. So what this committee and what our role is here is to determine how we are going to um, tax and levy that the property tax. So 29.9% of the city's total budget is the levy. And that's what we're discussing uh, here tonight. The levy for fiscal 24 is to be determined. The reason why is because our values are not final yet and we are also waiting for certification of new growth. We can, we'll talk about new growth in a moment. Uh, I would note that the uh, there's already a commitment for a little more than $7 million uh, to offset the levy this year. And that would result in an average uh, taxpayer, single home owner, that would result in a savings of about $105 from off of their fiscal 24 real estate tax bill. I just kind of wanted to highlight some of the significant budget Patrick, changes. Before you move on, there's people that don't really know. So, and I know that I'm sending this video to people that um, couldn't make it down there and would like to watch it. So can you explain what that offset means? That means that there's funding being put toward the the what? That's uh, so we've got the total levy, and mm -hmm. the administration is using uh, a little more than seven million dollars to reduce the total levy. So the total amount that we are taxing uh, the residents and businesses of the city of Springfield. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're reducing the total amount by seven million dollars. And then when we um, when we have the total levy amount, can you just tell us what buckets of money? that um, reduction is coming from later, not today, but when we have the real number so folks can have the real picture. Sure, so anytime we, we reduce the levy and the city of Springfield, because we are a split rate community, uh, it's going to shift where that, that reduction goes. Um, but we can talk about that certainly when we actually have the total <laughs> levy. <laughs> yeah. uh, Okay, thank you. Uh, Patrick, do you know where that $7 million is coming from right now or no? That's what I'm saying, yeah. Yeah, so $5 million was committed to as part, if I if I remember correctly, as part of the budget process for fiscal 24. And the city uh, invested money in some T-bills 
there where the interest was going to be used to offset fiscal 24 taxes. So that's where the 5 million plus the 2,049,066 in interest. Thank you. You're welcome. So these, the to the right of this slide is just some significant uh, sort of budget changes from fiscal 23 to fiscal 24 and included uh, an increase in the school department, uh, also transportation increase of $2.8 million. Uh, the city increased the pension payment from uh, up to uh, an increase of five and a half million employee benefits saw an increase and there were also increases in the budget because of salary and wages with uh, unions. So this isn't for you, Patrick, more for Tim, but we need to talk to the school department about this increase in transportation because the transportation for the school department has been really crazy and, and, and horrible this year. And for us to have a transportation increase, I want to know why that is. So mm -hmm. have a meeting to discuss that because I don't think we need to be paying anything in addition. In fact, we should probably be getting some money back. They're missing, mm -hmm. missing stops. They're missing kids, mm -hmm. what types they're sharing um, bus transportation. So I just really want to know why that increase is there. Right. I can't see the, uh, appreciate what you're saying, Tracy and Zeta, um, but your pictures are blocking out. What's the number transportation increase? 2.8 million increase. 2.8. Okay. Thanks. Sorry, Patrick, that's, sorry. That's okay, yeah. Uh, so this is a slide on the levy reduction. So the city of Springfield started using uh, free cash to offset the levy in 2021. So I would just point out that this is a one-time source of money uh, that will eventually dry up. Um, one of the complicating things is because we're a split rate community, we have to find a constant when we're, when we're looking at what does a million dollars save the average taxpayer? Mm -hmm. So there's a few different constant we, we can use, and they generally all result in approximately a $15 per million dollars uh, to the average taxpayer. So for example, in fiscal 21, we used a million dollars of free cash to offset the levy. That saved the average taxpayer $15. Mm -hmm. In 2022, we used two and a half million. That saved the average person $37. In 2023, we used 10 million, so thus we saved $151. In 2024, we've already committed the seven plus million dollars. So that'll be approximately $106 uh, savings. Uh, just to be, you know, the total amount used over these years was 20.5 million, and that resulted in an average tax savings from 21 to 23 to the average single family bill of $308. And yet, Patrick, bills still went up because the property values, on average, bills still went up because the property values were high. Mm -hmm. Property mm -hmm. values, yes. And also, if there's a, an increase in the levy, so if you have property values uh, increase or the property, uh, if the levy increases as well, then there would be a a tax increase. And just for those who don't who don't know what the levy, how that's determined during budget season. When um, the budget is being created, they say we're going to use this amount of property taxes to offset the expenses mm -hmm. that we have in the budget. Is that pretty accurate? That's correct. Okay, thank you. So it can be determined during budget season um, what that property tax that we're going to use mm -hmm. um, amount is, right? Um, I don't know if the budget is necessarily uh, determines the levy because there's other components to what the levy is. So it's, it's you know, we're looking at what was the levy limit last year. We're adding two and a half percent to that and adding any new growth, which is what we're going to talk about next. So that's really what determines the levy. But we don't always have to charge. We, we determine how much of the levy we're going to use to offset the budget. Maybe I didn't say that correctly. I, th yeah, I, th I think that could be correct. Yep. Okay. Thank you. You're so welcome. for a po for point of information, how do you get to that um, specific amount when you are looking at the levy? Patrick, could you explain that to me? Sure. So that's... Uh... 
I don't have the example yet because we're waiting on new growth, but during this presentation at our next meeting, I will have kind of the specific calculation of how we arrived at uh, the levy for this year. So what we're doing is we look at the last year's levy limit. We get a two and a half percent increase on that levy limit and new growth. So that's what really determines the new levy for the next fiscal year. And when I have real numbers, maybe that becomes a little clearer. Thank you. Yeah, because I we need to understand that part of it. Thank you. Agreed. You're welcome. Can I okay. also just chime in on something? Of course. Um, so free cash. Um, you gave a, a slight explanation of that, but it's confusing for, for people what free cash is. And I think the best way to describe it is it's kind of like your tax refund. So it's sort of the money that comes back to a community after all the budget things shake out from the previous year, right? Mm -hmm. So it's it's just money from the previous year. It's not as if there's a some big pot of <laughs> right. money that can be accessed, right? I liken it to um, the taxpayers paid too much in taxes. Right. <laughs> Although last year we had additional free cash that we got from other sources. Yeah, it comes in from different out. sources, but it is kind mm -hmm. of like your, it's kind of like your tax refund. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would just be hesitant to put it in terms that simple because there's a lot more than just the mm -hmm. levy that goes into our revenue that determines the free cash. So we could have grant payments. We had the mm -hmm. right. payment. So a lot of different things just besides, you know, the levy um, goes into our free cash. And we're happy to go over free cash. Pat and I are working on a breakdown of our free cash for FY23. Um, but I've never heard it explained that way. And I understand that. I would just be hesitant to really um, simplify it in those terms. Right. I mean, I understand it comes from all different sources, yeah, but yeah. it's sort of like the shaking out of the previous year. And yeah. mm -hmm. it's really our surplus, which includes any, um, you know, expenses that we had savings on and then also revenue that came in that was unexpected. Exactly. Right. Thank you, Lindsay. That was great. Oh, like the budget deficit or surplus of the federal government, isn't it? Yeah. At the end of the year, it's the city's hopefully surplus. Um, just based on all fiscal year spending and fiscal year receipts. A, right. a tax refund you're due though, so it's not right. 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 Yeah. Because you paid too much. And so you agree, Pat, with that? Yes. It's like we brought money in, we didn't spend it all on any expenditures that we had. We get it back in the form of free cash. Mm-hmm. Okay, Patrick. So new growth, uh, new growth is an increase in the annual levy limit that reflects increases in the tax base uh, since the prior year. This is a recognition that new development typically requires additional costs to the city. For example, new houses require additional services and including school enrollment, police, fire, and trash pickup. Uh, additionally, new growth includes any items taxed for the very first time uh, including new additions to houses or new personal property. Our actually bigger, biggest driving force of growth is personal property. Uh, and once this is certified, I'll have those numbers uh, as well. Uh, just note that new growth does not include any increases simply based on the full and fair cash value adjustment. So if single families go up 10%, that 10% does not is not calculated as new growth. I never heard, Patrick, of new growth coming from can you go back one slide yes coming from additional services including school enrollment police fire and trash yeah that's i don't i don't remember that so hmm. if we add a service that contributes to new growth no the service that they pay for like correct. the trash fee Oh, there. Oh, that's considered new growth. The how, if it's a brand new house mm -hmm. uh, that was not taxed in a prior fiscal year, that house is new growth. 
then the reason why is because proposition two and a half says off of our levy limit, we can do two and a half percent increase on what the levy limit was in the prior year. So these new houses or new personal properties were never in the prior year's levy. Right. So this is recognition that, you know, the levy can increase not only two and a half, but then also you add in the new growth. So for example, my daughter just bought a house. It's a brand new house. It wasn't included in new growth. So now not well, only that's new growth. So now not only is her house um new growth, but now that she's paying for trash, that's considered mm -hmm. new growth. It's uh, this is just why we are allowed to pick up new growth. Oh, okay. part of this process. Sorry, I I was um maybe <laughs> yeah. I was not clear on that slide at all and I'll try to update that for the next time. I was like, "Oh, that's new growth." Okay, I see what you're saying. That's why we can include new growth because Correct. of the services. Gotcha. gotcha. Right. And in and the, the, what the slide says is that it requires additional cost to the city, uh, like school okay. enrollment, police, gotcha. trash. All right. I just read, for example, I guess. And then <laughs> I was like, oh, shoot, that's good. Okay. But all right. Thanks for that. Explanation. So this is the city council's role. The city budget uh, must be adopted before July 1st, and it sets the expenditures for the fiscal year. The actual tax levy is not established until the Department of Revenue reviews and approves the assessed values and new growth. Uh, the city council must adopt a residential factor. The factor can be uh, a one, which would be a single rate. Um, most communities have a single rate. Uh, any community with a lot of commercial um, properties, they generally do split the tax rate. Uh, so that is essentially what we, this committee, will be recommending to the full city council is what is an appropriate residential factor. Um, we will go over that once you see the options table uh, much more uh, in detail. Uh, we have an internal uh, deadlines uh, in order to generate third quarter bills timely, and that is to have a residential tax factor approved by December 1st. Um, once the council approves a residential factor, we, the administration, we, the city, we still have a substantial amount of work, uh, including uh, DOR also has additional work to actually approve our tax rates. Um, and uh, we, we need that approval in order to generate our third quarter tax bills. The residential tax factor, what this actually does is it sets the tax burden to be borne by each class of property. The city council, as, as I just said, we can adopt a residential factor of a one, a single tax rate, or we can shift some of that tax burden from the residents uh, to the commercial, industrial, and personal property class. The city of Springfield, the maximum allowable shift uh, is 1.75 when we get, I, I hate to do this again, but once we get the options table, you'll see all of the options that, that the city council has. This is looking at the shift just in a pie chart. So the, the pie chart on the left is the percent of the total value. So the residents total value is 76.9% of our total value, value of $11 billion. CIP is 23. Last year for fiscal 23, in fiscal 23, we shifted uh, a, 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 from the residents to commercial industrial, and this is the shift. So you'll see on the left what their actual values are, and on the right, the percentage of the levy. Options table, unfortunately. Uh, I'm sorry, weeks. can you go back real quick on that? I, yes. I, I was looking at the chart and then the numbers and I kind of like missed yeah. the numbers. Thank you. What was the split that, uh, that generated this table between 1 and 1 1.75? It was... One point six nine two one three. Thank you. Thank you. This is looking at the average tax bills compared to our surrounding communities. The city of Springfield, we do have the lowest uh, average tax bill uh, in the area. Uh, the second lowest would be Chicopee. 
So last year it was $3,677 uh, for the average single family tax bill. And I love, the I love the fact that y'all say that, but I also wanted to talk about the income. We have one of the lower mm -hmm. income that come in also. So when I, when I talk about that, I like to say it's relative to the income we're bringing in. Um, so since our income in Springfield is one of the lowest in the Commonwealth, tax bills should also be one of the lowest in the mm -hmm. Commonwealth. And I just like to say that because we we tout having the lowest tax bill. Right. Shouldn't be something that we tout having one of the lowest incomes in the Commonwealth, mm -hmm. but it is the truth. And so it's relevant um, in the conversation. So I just wanted to bring that out, Patrick, but thank you um, for saying that. The average single family tax bills in the area from 2015 to 2013. So Springfield is the bottom one that's kind of in this red or orange. Uh, you'll just kind of see the average bill uh, over the years uh, and, and Springfield has gone up, uh, but we are basically in proportion with all of the other municipalities uh, who have also uh, seen an increase as well. Just a timeline for the quarterly billing, just as a reminder, uh, the first and second quarter bills are always preliminary bills. Uh, and uh, they're just a product of math. It's basically what did the uh, property owner pay in the prior year? And it takes that number and uh, divides it in. Basically, it takes a quarter of that. Uh, the primary, the, the first quarter bill would is typically due on August 1st. The second quarter is November 1st. Uh, the third quarter is February 1st. And then May 1st for the fourth quarter bill. I say typically because if the days fall on a weekend, then it gets pushed over to the Monday. Personal exemptions. Uh, these are exemptions that people can apply for uh, and receive an exemption on their real estate tax bills. This particular one is $1,000. Uh, last uh, two years ago, uh, the city council and the mayor, they lowered the age from 70 to 65 and uh, also extremely importantly, doubled the amount from 500 uh, to 1,000. We also have other, other options, including 17D for someone who's over the age of 70, if someone is blind, if they're a veteran with a disability rating of 10% or more, uh, the veterans can receive an abatement from 400 to a full exemption, kind of depending upon uh, their status. People can apply for a Community Preservation Act exemption. And uh, Councilor Gouvan, I know we've, we've talked quite a bit uh, I don't know if, if I've talked about this enough in years past, but it's called the circuit breaker. Mm -hmm. And this is something that is designed specifically to help people over the age of 65 offset mm -hmm. their real estate taxes. And um, I looked up statistics and they only had, it's not noted here, I don't think, but it it is only for, it's calendar 20. And there were 1,619 Springfield filers that received an average of an $852 credit. Now, this is a refundable tax credit. So even if you, a lot of people think they don't have to file, so they don't. Right. But they might be missing out on a benefit by not filing. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I kind of want to spread the news onto this one a little more. Yeah, Patrick and I both do. <laughs> That is the end of the presentation. Do do I have any other questions? So in terms of the circuit breaker, what are the pros and cons when they file? That's good to know for the community because sometimes it could work against you and it could work in favor. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if there's a negative. And honestly, I'm not as up to speed on the specifics okay. as I should well, be. Well, I am, Patrick. I'm a tax professional. Oh, I excellent. Speak to take, it. Take Most it people that qualify for the circuit breaker credit but don't take advantage of it are not required to file. So that means that if they do file and they qualify for the circuit breaker credit, it really couldn't be a negative because if you're not required to file, that means you don't have to pay taxes on mm -hmm. any income. So if you do file, um, the benefit is you can get um, up to, well, that's an that's an old number, that 852. That's not the right amount 
that you can that get. That was the average in Oh, counseling. the average. Okay, that's the average. But you can get yeah. up to like eleven hundred dollars, um, counselor Perez. Mm -hmm. But if okay. you don't file at all, you get nothing. Don't get anything, right? Yeah. So that's yeah, because why. when you don't have to file, that means that you're not making enough money for right. them to pay. So that's why people don't file. But right. then if you do file, you're going to be able to get this um, circuit breaker uh, benefit. And there are other stipulations to get it. Like you got to pay a certain amount of rent or if you're an owner of a home, you got to have a certain amount of property tax that you pay and things like that. So, mm -hmm. but if they don't have to pay and they're um, 65 or older, they should at least try, right? You might not right. get the whole amount, but you could get something and that could help offset the um, real estate tax bill as well. Right. But Patrick... Okay. And um, Ms. um, Councillor Govan's point is, Councillor Whitfield, I I kind of recall seeing uh, a few months ago that Massachusetts Governor um, doubled the tax credit. Is that oh, correct? I don't know, but I'm gonna look it up tonight. I'll let you know next meeting, Patrick. Okay. I haven't done my um tax update class yet, so I'm not sure, but I'm gonna look tonight. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah, I, I I will too. I I maybe it wasn't doubled, but I I remember I thought there was an increase. Um. So yeah, we should definitely look that up. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, I, we just got a link here. Um. I assume that the city has somebody maybe working through their um council on aging that's helping seniors with this. No. Mm -hmm. We need to. And I'm going to see if we can figure out a way to do that, because I think last year, um, Patrick and I <laughs> became good friends um, because I had a couple of seniors that were in this predicament where the property taxes went up too high. They were both 85, both longtime residents, both retired and were concerned about their property tax. So I did tell them about this. So hopefully they took advantage of it and were able to, you know, get some relief. Um, but I think it's a very um you know, it's a it's a secret that not a lot of people know about. So I think, you know, it's important for us to be able to tell everybody about it. And there's yeah. I think there's shine. Shine is the program. The shine is there. That we do help. have a shine program. I don't know if they talk about this, though. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll follow up with Sandy Federico about that. That's and I great. know that and I know there's a couple of people that have filed. But there's a lot of people. And that's why I asked the question, because one of the questions that was asked is what getting educated um if you file do not file but i know there's some loopholes there so it's it, it's nice that this take a priority because we have a lot of aging uh, property owners in our city that's why i was mm -hmm. asking some mm -hmm. questions thank right. you so much you i did so find right. the article uh that i that i kind of remembered seeing and, and i don't know the details of it yet but we can know more for the next meeting but it did uh this article is stating that it the circuit breaker credit doubled from mm. 1200 maximum to 2400 maximum. Yeah. That's good. Mm -hmm. I'll find out for sure too, Patrick. Um, Great, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions for now? I, I know we don't have the options table. I will get it out as soon as I can. And then if anyone has any questions, uh, you can reach out to me individually. I think we do have our next subcommittee meeting scheduled for the Monday after Thanksgiving, uh, which is... That's the 27th. Our next meeting is Monday, the, the 27th. And Patrick, let's just go through that. That's a second meeting of this. And Correct. you'll have, hopefully have numbers for us. And um, I just got a text that um, that Ruth Ann uh, fell down today and hurt herself. So that's oh, why no. she's not here. Um, so um, hopefully she'll be able to come then, but I'll follow up with her. Um, so that meeting, I, I can't remember if it's at 4 or 4.30, probably 4. Um, and then what? We finished that meeting. So the expectation would be that this committee would uh, recommend a factor that would then get reported to the full city council. So at this point, we have full tax classification hearing scheduled for the 28th of November, if needed, the 29th and the 30th as well. Mm -hmm. So the expectation is our next meeting is we will try to come up with a recommended uh, tax factor. Mm -hmm. And 
Yeah, that's the 27th. And then there's the 28th is the public hearing, right? Correct. So it'd be a public hearing first and then the actual tax classification. So we'll, the public hearing will be closed. Uh, then I'll basically present the same information uh, to the full city council to then determine, for them to determine how to uh, split the tax rate. So that's the 27th and 28th. Um, it's a possibility that we would have to go farther than that. The 29th is a problem on, on uh, um, Tracy's schedule, et cetera. We're hoping we can get this done by Tuesday the 28th. Um, yeah, because we've got booked, we've got this booked every day, I think that week, but, um, mm -hmm. nothing we can do about it now, except ask any questions of Patrick or any, um, but for all of you on the committee, if you can be available the 27th and the 28th, those are definites. Um, after that, it's a little iffy. So if we finish our job on the 28th, we're fine. Um, Otherwise, we might have to go to the to a different date than the 29th. Um, um, Councilor Allen, I'll be um, I'm traveling back on the 27th. I'm not sure if I'll be able to join the meeting at four o'clock, yeah. but I'm, I'll be there for the 28th meeting. Okay. Will you be at the council meeting that night? I doubt it. I don't think so. Um, I'm going to be landing at seven o'clock. So I got gotcha. you. I was just going to say I could update you then, but okay. So that's a tough day for you. Um, yeah. All right. Um, um, Patrick, you're all set with what you've given us? I think so. And you'll yeah, be in touch, Patrick. Thank you so much for calling too. Oh, you're welcome. I appreciate that. And you're, you're going to email us when you have that information. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Any other questions? Uh, here in this room at City Hall or out in EV land, anybody got a question? <laughs> I just want to thank Patrick for that. That's a real. That was a great presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you for including me on this um, committee. I was about to say the same thing and to the team. Um, I know you don't do it alone, Patrick. Um, so I just wanted to thank you and the team for a great presentation. Great job. Um, if you always do. And I have the same sentiments. Yeah, it was great. A lot of learning. Thank you. Good. Thank you, That's great. Good vibes there, Patrick. You got some good vibes here today. So <laughs> nice going. You All right. Fine. Hey, Councilor Allen, can I ask a quick technical question? Sure. I, I just to Mr. Drino, I, I was just curious that 1.75 factor, the amount that can be shifted towards CIP, is that yes. a city? rule or is that a state rule I, it said city of springfield but i was curious if that was a state requirement it's a state rule but that is based on sort of the historic kind of shift prior to tax classification frankly i don't know exactly how it all works but a community is either a 1.5 or a 1.75 and we are in the 1.75 category mm. Okay, so that's, that's helpful. I, I was just curious if other communities in Massachusetts that are already at the 1.75 limit. You know, we looked at that last year. Um, Matt, do you happen to remember off the top of your head, and we can check it out for the next meeting, uh, how many are at map shift? I don't remember a particular number, but I would say you know about half of them who do shift are there or near there. Okay, well, you guys can look at okay. it and fill us in when we come back together on the 27th. Certainly. Yeah. We all set? You all Thank set? You. With that? All right. Great. Thanks, Jay. All right. Well, let's call it then. I don't see any more Thank questions. Thank you. Have a good night. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for coming. Take care. Good night. Bye-bye.